know what I realized? Even though I've sublimated over a hundred things, I've only set up my color settings on my printer one time. I have not changed them and I don't have any plans to change them. Hello everyone and welcome to Crafting with Delanda. It's me again, Delanda. And thank you so much for joining me today. In today's tutorial, I am responding to your request. You have been asking me, Delanda, what are your printer settings? Share your printer settings. I've shared them in my Facebook group. I've shared them on Instagram. I've shared them on TikTok. But today, I am going to show you step by step how I set my printer settings for sublimation. I am also going to show you how to set yours and save them so you never have to set them again. I can show you a little bit how to kind of play around with the settings, but just know I do not change my settings. I try to keep them standard so that once I'm ready to print, I'm not playing around with the settings. I just go to my preset and I am good to go. At any time during this tutorial, if you're finding this helpful, please consider liking the video, subscribing to my channel, and turning on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week. Now, without further ado, let's get started. So remember I said I've sublimated a lot of things. I'm going to show you 10 items that I've sublimated on my channel. There's a video for every single thing I'm going to show you. And after I show you these 10 things, we are going to talk about printers, we're going to talk about ink, and we're going to talk about paper. Okay, so let's look at the 10 items. So this first thing is a canvas, and it's just one of those, I think it's like eight by 10 canvas that you could buy in a package of 10 from Walmart, Hobby Lobby, Amazon, you could buy them anywhere. Um, and what I did was I took polyester fabric, I sublimated the image on the fabric, and I wrapped it around the canvas. So this is item number one. This is one of those Dollar Tree um, dry erase boards. I got this when Dollar Tree was still $1. So it's $1.25 now. I sublimated the image of my husband and I. This is a sublimated mouse pad. This is sublimation with the DTF hack. So I use my sublimation ink. And I use some of that DTF powder. So it's a hack. It's not, you know, true DTF and it's not true sublimation. Um, and that's how I got this photo on this shirt. This is also the sublimation DTF hack. This is on a cotton shirt. So um, I use the same, <clears throat> same, excuse me, same ink and the DTF powder. These are those infamous gnomes that y'all keep asking me about wash updates. I've washed it multiple times. If you've done it, wash yours and see how it comes out. This is sublimation on clear HTV and under that is white heat transfer vinyl because you cannot sublimate on regular white heat transfer vinyl. Well, you can, but you probably shouldn't, but give it a try. Um, that's what this is. This shirt has been washed multiple times. Um, still same ink. This is just regular true sublimation on polyester because remember sublimation is intended for polyester fabrics. So anytime you see sublimation and it's done with a hack, that's how it happens on cotton and other fabrics, okay? That's what this is. This is a sublimated tumbler that I made during Valentine's Day. This is the first sublimated 20 ounce tumbler that I did in the Cricut mug press. This is a job, but I was able to accomplish it. And this tumbler was also done in the Cricut mug press. This one almost took me out, but thank goodness I survived. It just says blessed and I'm blessed that I survived this because it almost turned into a debacle. All right, so now we've looked at some images. Let's talk about ink. Let's talk about paper and let's talk about sublimation printer options before we head over to the computer and get the settings set up the right way or the way that I've done mine. Let's quickly talk about paper. My favorite paper is the A-Sub 
brand of sublimation paper and as you can see i've purchased a lot of it and i have multiple sizes and weights the one i use the most is the a sub 125 gram this is their premier paper it's the heaviest weight of paper they carry in the a sub brand um, i've used the 120 gram eight and a half by 14 i actually used that one in my last tutorial when i did the sublimated tumbler that looks like this it just has dog mom on one side and on the other side it had a picture of my dog milo and i also sublimated this photo mug of my daughters and i i do feel like the images came out very very vibrant i don't feel like the paper impacted the uh, brightness at all so there are multiple options when it comes to purchasing paper i say find the one you like this is something that you can you know change up as you find one that you like more uh, one thing i'll note about the difference between paper and ink is that when you get started with your sublimation ink you want to stick with that brand so it's that's, that is not the case with paper though you can switch it out as often as you like all right so now let's move over and talk about ink Let's talk really quickly about ink. This is the brand of ink that I use. It is the Hippo Sublimation Ink. I have only tried this kind and I don't intend to switch it out. This is not like sublimation paper where you can try out different ones. It is best to pick one and stick with it. So if you already have sublimation ink in your printer, keep it in there, don't switch it out. If you have decided you are going to switch it out no matter what I say, I do not have any guidance to give you because I have not tried that and I don't intend to. Okay, so let's look at the difference between these two boxes. Not to say that the box makes the difference in what the bottles look like, but I want you to know what to pay attention to if you are not going to use the links that I have provided below the video. In this box, you will see that the bottles look like this. These bottles are intended to be used with EcoTank printers because once I take the cap off, you will see that the cap looks like this. And if I were ready to refill my yellow ink and I were to turn this over, you can see that none of the ink is pouring out. Hopefully you can also tell that I'm not squeezing the bottle. I'm just holding the bottle upside down and you can see that none of the ink is coming out because the way these caps are designed is intended to work with that eco tank printer. So once the cap is pushed down into the printer, the ink will start to flow until that slot is filled up. So this makes refilling your ink very, very easy. In comparison to these bottles, these bottles were, in my opinion, intended to be used with workforce printers or printers that will require the use of the syringes. So these caps are a little bit different. Now, if you are not going to use the links that I have provided below the video, I highly suggest, I see a little bubble right there. I highly suggest that you just pay attention to the description and make sure you're not getting the ink that will require syringes to take the ink out of the bottle i'm not sure what these are called but i think these are called auto refill bottles okay so just pay attention to that um, when you are making your purchase all right so now we've talked about paper we've talked about ink let's look at my exact printers and then we will look at my exact printer settings if you are finding this video helpful please consider liking the video and subscribing to my channel. Let's move back over and look at the printers. This is an Epson EcoTank 2760 and it is filled with sublimation ink. It is capable of printing up to eight and a half by 14. This is an Epson EcoTank 15,000. It is considered as a wide format printer because it can print up to 13 by 19. Both of these printers are capable of wireless printing. However, I personally like to keep both of my printers connected directly to my computer 
because I feel that it gives me a more stable connection and I haven't ever had a problem with my image not printing all the way through due to poor Wi-Fi service or any of the connectivity issues. That is a matter of personal preference. Now let's head over to the computer and look at how to get your printer settings to match mine. Now, if you have not watched my previous video regarding sublimation and getting started, I will make sure it is linked below this video. But one thing you must do if you purchase an Epson EcoTank and you are intending to use it for sublimation, you will need to go to the Epson.com website, navigate to do a search for your specific printer, and then you will download the drivers that go along with that printer. Now, I'm not going to do that, but I would highly suggest you do that because that will make all the difference once you get started with your printer and your ink to make sure your colors are coming out right. So for example, if I were going to do a search for my Epson EcoTank 15,000 in this search bar, I would just type in ET15000 and I would hit enter and I would see what comes up. Here it is right here. It came up. And what I would do is I would download the drivers that go along with the printer. Okay, so now what we're going to do is go to Microsoft Word, I just like to print from Microsoft Word. I have done a few uh, comparisons and I just, I like the colors, they're vibrant to me. If you like to print from a different app, do what works best for you. Okay, so let's move over to Microsoft Word and I'm gonna show you how I got my settings. I am in Microsoft Word and the first thing I'm going to do is just kind of stretch my margins out just a little bit so that I can make the image a little bit bigger than what would typically be allowed if my margins were just standard. So I do it at the top and I also stretch them out on the, on the side. Okay, so I'm gonna bring this down and just stretch the margins out. This will give me a chance to make the, um, the image bigger. The next thing I'm going to do is just type um, Microsoft Word and I'll make that a little bit bigger and well, I guess I'll make it a lot bit bigger and I want that to be centered and I'll hit enter and now I will insert the image to, from this device. I found this image on the designbundles.net website. And what I'm gonna do is I am going to go and click file. I'm going to click print and I'm going to navigate to my Epson EcoTank 2760 series printer. I'm going to choose my printer properties. Now I'm on the main tab and once I look here I can see all of these standard presets. The document size is eight and a half by eleven. The orientation is portrait. The paper type that I typically choose is premium presentation paper mat. If that is hard to remember just remember the word mat. Okay, so when I look at all of these different options, I don't want anything that says glossy. I'm going to use the one that says matte. The quality is high. The color should be on the color option. Two-sided printing is off. Multi-page is off. These two boxes are checked. It doesn't matter if you leave them checked or uncheck them, especially if you're just printing one sheet. Okay, so the next tab gives me more options. Once again, my document size is eight and a half by 11. The output paper should be the same size as the pretty much the document size. So keep it as same as document size. I did not have reduce or enlarge checked. And for color correction, if yours is on automatic, I would suggest changing it to custom and then clicking advanced, but we're not gonna click that yet. I wanna make sure that you see right here where it says additional settings, rotate image is not checked, high speed is not checked, mirror image is checked. So I'm going to click advanced 
right here for color correction it has the options for color management and it also has fixed photo with auto correct i don't choose that i choose color controls and right here where it says color mode my printer is set to adobe rgb you will not have these options if you have not downloaded the printer drivers from the epson website the gamma is set to 2.2 my color circle is right here where it is. I have not made any changes. I have not increased the brightness, contrast, saturation, or density. I kept all of this as is. I'm going to click OK. I did not do anything to the maintenance of the printer. For more options, because I like the way this looks, I can save this as a preset. Let me show you how to do that. These are my exact printer settings. Okay, let me look at image options. Okay, I did not have anything checked right here. I'm going to click on add or remove preset. And I'm going to give this one a name. I'm going to call this Microsoft Word Sublimation. And you can call it you can really literally call it whatever you want to call it and i'm going to call this mirrored okay because you might have a preset that's not mirrored okay and you can even give it a little icon i'm going to give it this red little icon right here and i can see that my current settings are rear paper feed 11 eight and a half by 11 borderless printing is off it's in the portrait mode it's in premium presentation paper mat the quality is high um, the color is on the color option. I have, I don't have anything else checked for reduce or enlarge or any of that. Okay. My mirror image is on color management is on color controls, Adobe, Adobe RGB, and I don't have any watermarks or anything like that. I'm going to click save. So now this is saved as a preset and I'm going to click close. And I am going to get this printed out. So now if I look in my presets, I have my Microsoft Word sublimation mirrored. And I am going to click OK. And I am going to get this printed out. We will also print one from Cricut Design Space. And we'll see. We can just compare what the settings look like. I can even save a preset in Cricut Design Space. Okay. So let's get this one printed out. I'm going to go ahead and click print. And I will show you what that looks like back on the, I'll be back on the camera for that. I am in Cricut Design Space and I have decided to speed this part of the video up because the purpose of printing from here is just to do a comparison. So I am uploading that same rainbow sunflower and I will get this printed out so we can compare. Going to click continue. Going to send this to my printer. Going to select my Epson Eco Tank 2760. I'm going to turn the ad bleed off. Use system dialog on. I'm going to click print. I am going to choose my preferences and I am going to create another preset. I am going to go to premium presentation paper mat the quality is high keep the color on i can put this on reverse order or uncheck it it doesn't matter and i can go to my more options same eight and a half by 11 color correction will be custom and i'm going to go to advanced i am going to go to Let's see, fix photo, autocorrect. Let's see what no color adjustment looks like. 
We're going to take mirror image high speed off. We're going to select mirror image. Let's see that again. None of that. Let's look at advanced again. Color controls. Let's look at Epson Vivid and keep everything else the same. So we'll keep the Epson Vivid settings. We'll click OK. And let's save this as a preset. So we'll call this one Cricut Epson Vivid Mirrored. And we will give this a blue book and we will save this and we will close it and we will let's find that Cricut Epson Vivid okay and I'm going to click OK and we'll get this printed and I'll do that back on the camera okay we are at the finish line what I have right now is my heat press set to 400 degrees I have don't judge me <laughs> I have some polyester fabric that I purchased from Walmart and what I did was I just cut some pieces away from this fabric because we're going to just sublimate on this polyester fabric. I purchased this I think for like two dollars in the cut fabric section at Walmart. It is 100% polyester. So what I've done is I have all three images. I have my Microsoft Word image and remember the settings for that was um, Adobe RGB. I have one that I printed from Cricut Designs. Well, I actually have two that I printed from Cricut Design Space. One I did on camera and the other one I did not. And when I was in Cricut Design Space, I changed one of the settings to the Epson Vivid just to see what the settings would look like if you didn't use the Adobe RGB. And I printed one with the Adobe RGB settings that we established in Microsoft Word just to see what the images will look like. And like I said, I just cut some fabric away. So this fabric is not cut very nice or neat, but we're not here for that anyway. So the reason why we add butcher paper is so we don't get any ink on our heat press. So I have a piece of fabric and I'm going to give it a lint roll to make sure I don't get any of those pesky blue fibers. So this is just a lint roller. And I'm gonna do a quick, just a quick, 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 quick pre-press of this to get any of those wrinkles out. I don't have my um, pressure up, so it's just light pressure. Okay, now I'm going to place the image face down on the heat press. We'll do the Microsoft Word image first. It's important to note that when your image prints out, it is going to look dull, and you might be wondering, Delanda said it's gonna be vibrant. Well, it looks like this before it doesn't. It looks like this before the heat. Okay, so Adobe RGB, this is what it looks like. Okay, get a good look at it. Get a good look. Okay, let's place it down. Let's add some heat resistant tape. And my tape, I'm gonna just tape a couple pieces down so we don't get any ghosting. And I will put butcher paper on top of this. And we will press this on 400 degrees for 60 seconds. Come back when that's finished. It's beeping. All right, let's see what this looks like. I'm excited to see what this looks like. I almost wish I had taken a picture so you can see some of the ink on that paper, on my butcher paper. Remember the butcher paper protects the heat press from getting any ink on it. Okay. So, oh, I can see it already. I can see it already. <laughs> oh my goodness, look at that. Look at that. It is beautiful. Look at that. Okay, so get a good look at what printing from Microsoft Word looks like. And this is with the Adobe RGB settings with the Gamma 2.2 and everything I showed you that are my exact printer settings. Now let's look at what the Epson Vivid looks like from Cricut Design Space. 
So I'm going to remove this because there's also butcher paper. I mean, there's also ink on here. I'm going to add more butcher paper to my heat press. I'm going to do a lint roll on this fabric. This is the Cricut Design Space Epson Vivid. Get a good look at it. It looks dull. We will get it taped down. Oh wait, I need to cut these registration marks off. Okay, I'm gonna get it taped down. I cut the registration marks off. So notice the image is smaller in Cricut Design Space. Four hundred degrees for sixty it's seconds. Beeping. Oh, let's take a look at it. Okay, so we can already see it from the back, also. But this is what it looks like before being um, revealed. But let's see. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. I did get a little ghosting though. Okay, I got a little bit of ghosting. So if you wanted to know what ghosting looks like, this is ghosting. See how it looks like a double image? So I needed more tape or more pressure right there. That is the result of not being careful enough. That's ghosting. But let's look at the difference in the colors. So here is the Microsoft Word with the Adobe RGB. And this is the Cricut Design Space. I don't think they both look really good. I don't really see a, I really don't see a major difference. This one is a little bit more dull, I would say. This one is more vibrant. Okay, we have one more to press. That is Cricut Design Space with the Adobe RGB. To see if it matters what app we print it from, I will get my butcher paper placed on the heat press and we will get this one pressed. This is our last image. Okay, so let's see, we got some ink on the paper. And this is, oh goodness gracious, this is Cricut Design Space with the Adobe RGB settings. And look at how vibrant that, uh-uh. <laughs> look at how vibrant that is look at that look I love it so you can see the ink is in the fabric right you see that the ink is in there it's not on there okay so this is very thin polyester not like a Cricut brand shirt all right so this is the uh, Cricut Design Space with the Adobe RGB settings, my standard settings. This is, let's see if there's a difference. This is Cricut Design Space with the Epson um, Vivid settings. Let's see if I get them closer. So this one just looks more vibrant to me with the Adobe RGB. It looks more vibrant in my opinion okay I don't know if this is helpful this view but hopefully it is so if you found this tutorial helpful please consider liking the video subscribing to my channel and turning on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week thank you so much for joining me today and thanks for watching. Bye.